Yo, what's up? It's Dave Gambrell from Digital Marketing Mentorship with Dave Gambrell. And today I want to talk to you about a decision that Facebook has made that is going to anchor a lot of people that are using Facebook to share live videos, doing Facebook lives, whether it's on their pages, their profiles, or maybe in the groups. Big news just came out. So let me share that news with you. We'll talk about it and we'll talk about what your options are on how to take care of this situation. So what they announced yesterday was they're updating their storage policy for videos. In a nutshell, you can read it there on the screen, but Facebook Live videos done from your pages or your profiles are going to be deleted automatically after 30 days. They used to stay on the platform forever, but now they're being deleted after 30 days, which for a lot of people can be an issue because maybe you have years like I do of Facebook Lives. Now, I've been backing them up and downloading them, so this isn't gonna to be too much of an issue for me, but maybe for you, if you have years of content that you want to make sure that you get a hold of before they get deleted by Facebook, here are some steps you're going to want to take. Anyway, they're going to delete them after 30 days from here on out. So if you do one today, it'll be deleted automatically in 30 days. But if you have some that have been recorded in years past, they're going to give you the ability to transfer them, download them off the platform, whatever the case may be. So it says here, and wherever you happen to be watching this, I'll make sure I share the link to this announcement and any other tools and resources that I talk about in this video, okay? So here are some things you're gonna be able to do. As of right now, I don't know how you go right to this download thing. It says that this is gonna be rolling out over time and that you're gonna get notified how to do this. So it says how to download your live videos on Facebook. It tells you right here how to do it. You can actually go to your activity log and it shows you here on a phone how to do it. But if you find your activity log, you can download individual videos. It shows you right here how to do it. It's really not that hard. You just go to the video, you click on a little ellipsis or three dots, and then you get a download option. You can download it directly to your device, to your phone, to your computer, wherever you happen to be accessing it. So if you just have a couple to do, that's probably the way to do it. All right. If you, and, and all the steps are here. I'm not going to walk you through all of them because you can look at this announcement. It shows you exactly how to do it. If you want to do a bulk download, it's showing you here how to do that. So maybe you have 10 or 50 or 100 or maybe 1,000. Like I have over 10, uh, over 2,300 last I checked. Uh, you may want to do a bulk download. Now here what it's showing you is you have to navigate to the notification that tells you that you can download, which I have not seen that notification yet. Now, granted, it's been less than 24 hours since I made this announcement. So maybe this will be rolling out. But when you get notified of this, you're going to have, I think, up to 90 days to download it. And you'll see it shows right here. You go to that thing, you click on it. If you want to do download, you can choose the eight, the, uh, the date range of the videos that you want to download, and then it can bulk download. And these will go directly to your computer. So hopefully your computer has enough space and you have a good internet connection. Okay? For a lot of people, though, if you have a lot of videos, probably what you're going to want to do is this option here, which is transfer live videos. The look and feel is basically the same as what they showed in the bulk downloads, except for that you can have them go directly to Dropbox or Google Drive. Those are the interfaces that they show right there. Maybe they'll add other ones later, but many of you have a Google Drive account. If you don't, you should probably set one up uh, and maybe go get a Dropbox account. I actually use Dropbox a lot. I pay for like a terabyte or two terabytes of storage, something like that. So that will be the option that I will probably use to, to transfer any videos out that I haven't already downloaded. Okay, so that's what you're going to want to do. You can also, it says convert your live videos to reels, but they would have to be, uh, I think under 90 seconds is what currently for reels. I know on Instagram, they just added uh, up to three minutes, but so those are basically your options right now. Okay, you can do a bulk transfer, you can do a bulk download, or you can do individual download of your videos. Uh, and if you want to delay it, I think it shows somewhere on here, let's see, you're going to get a notification that if you want to delay the download, so need more time, you can postpone the deletion, I think up to an additional six months. So this is not something you need to do right this second. But this is something you need to think about. And this is one of those things that I know for a lot of you, it would happen for me. You're going to put it off and then all of a sudden it's going to be a scramble. So if I were you, as soon as I got this notification, I would do something about it. Right. So that handles the videos that you've already done. Okay. What about videos that you're going to continue to do? One of the things I would recommend is that for you, you should use a third party app to do your Facebook lives. Like maybe 
Ecamm Live, and I'll share all my affiliate links to these for you. If you're using uh, a Mac like I am now, MacBook Pro, MacBook Air, whatever, you can use Ecamm Live to do your live streams, but it will also record a local file on your computer if that's what you want to do, okay? Maybe you're using something like StreamYard. That will do the same thing, okay? StreamYard, you can stream to Facebook, but it will also give you the option, I think only on the paid plans. I don't think you can do this on the free plans, but on the paid plans, you can save save it locally. And then there's something like Restream where you can stream to Facebook and also save it locally or have it saved on maybe YouTube, something like that, okay? So number one, we're talking about how do you get the videos that you've already recorded and put up there? How do you save those? Okay, that's step one. Step two, if you're going to do videos now from here on out, just know that they're going to get deleted after 30 days. So make sure you're recording them either locally on your computer or using one of those other tools to have them be automatically saved to some other site, maybe Dropbox, maybe YouTube, whatever the case may be. And then step three is how are you going to host these things in a way that makes sense for your audience? So if you were doing your videos for Facebook Live in groups, which by the way, does not specifically mention groups in the announcement, but it says any Facebook Lives that were done from a page or a profile. So if you have a group on Facebook and you're broadcasting into that group, you're broadcasting as a page or profile. So I would imagine that group videos are also gonna be a part of this. Maybe not now, maybe they'll have a separate carve out for it, but I wouldn't wait if I were you. I would consider uh, doing something about it sooner rather than later. Okay, so what do you do with those videos now that like if you put them in a group or you had them in a nice kind of playlist on Facebook or in a Facebook group, what do you do? There are some options. If you have a business, if you're a speaker, trainer, coach, consultant, you're trying to teach stuff online or monetize your message or whatever, here are some things that you can do. You could take those videos and go put them on YouTube and put them in an unlisted playlist or make them all unlisted so people can't see them unless you want them to see them and you share the individual link. That's certainly a free way to do it. It's not very user-friendly, though, for your students or the people that you're coaching or consulting. So here are some options for you. My favorite is Kajabi. It's the most uh, robust. It has a ton. Well, I need to share my screen so you can see it. It has the, the most options for you because you can put the videos in there in online courses. You could have them in memberships. You could have them in communities. There's lots of ways you could do it. You can, uh, they also have a brand and mobile app if you want. You can build your landing pages, email marketing, all on one platform, all in one place. You can send your emails, do your opt-ins, capture the emails, the shopping cart, all of that stuff is on there, okay? So, you, and here's a cool thing. When you decide you're gonna upload your videos, so maybe you have, I don't know, 100 hours of archive videos you're gonna upload, they use Wistia in the background as their, video host and essentially you get unlimited. Now, unlimited is kind of a, a tough term in the digital space because if you tried to upload, you know, eight days worth of content, they would probably throttle you or put some limits on it. But for most people that are just trying to upload, I don't know, a few hours, a couple hours, maybe a hundred hours of, of content, 200 hours, maybe 300 hours, I don't know. You wouldn't really have any problem because they're using Wistia, which is one of the leading video hosting platforms and you can just upload as much as you want and you can gate your content just like you kind of did in Facebook so that either people just have to log in with their name and email address and they could access the stuff or you could have them pay you or some combination of those things however you want to do it so Kajabi is a great all-in-one option for that another option would be something called membership.io formerly searchy the cool thing about this is it's specifically set up to do um memberships so i mean obviously it's called membership.io so if you're creating membership groups things like that the cool thing about this is you can upload your videos to them and they automatically get transcribed and then you can search those videos and go directly to a part in the video that is relevant based on that search which is kind of cool that's why it was originally called searchy membership i o uh, membership.io doesn't have as many of the features as kajabi so the pricing is a little bit uh, cheaper or less but you have to integrate an email service like ConvertKit and you have to get your shopping cart set up through something like Stripe. You can do it. They walk you all through it, but it just doesn't have all the pieces nicely put together as it does in Kajabi. But this is another option for you. And like I said, it's not 
Uh, it doesn't cost as much as Kajabi, but Kajabi is one of those things where you get what you pay for. It's got it all in one spot for a reason, and it just makes it convenient for you. But if you want to go this route, this is great. My buddy Stu McLaren runs this. He's the the king or the guru of memberships, uh, and this is his a platform that he built along with his team. It's really good. I have a lot of my stuff on there. As a matter of fact, you can see this is where I was backing up a lot of my stuff from my Zoom calls and my Facebook Lives. Actually, we're getting backed up direct, directly in here. You'll see uh, over here somewhere I have a digital marketing mentorship Facebook group set up and there were uh, Facebook recently killed the uh, the interface between the two that was automatic, but there's something like 900 videos in there. So that's why I'm not so worried about this thing because I was having them automatically backed up here in membership.io. So that's another option for you. Uh, the last one I'm going to talk about is school. You can go to school and put them in there. Again, these are all paid options. Yes, I'm an affiliate or partner for all of them. I'll share my link in the comments, but you also could become a partner for them and essentially offset the investment in these tools by just telling other people that these are the tools that you use. And if they go and get it through your link, you get paid recurring revenue. It depends on which platform, but it's anywhere from 30 to 40% recurring that you get paid, which is kind of cool. So this is school. The thing about school is that you can set up courses and here I created a test course and you can see there's a video inside there. And if you click on this video, it will start playing and you can edit it and make it way prettier than I did. I was just doing this for a, a quick um, use case so you could see it. But the thing about school is they don't have their own video hosting. So if you're going to go with this arrangement to set up all your stuff the way you had it in a Facebook group so that people can go through it. And again, they can just join this without having to pay or you can pay gate it, which is kind of cool. You can, and you can put, I'll show you, you can uh, have it so everybody can do it. Maybe they unlock it at it reaching a certain level or they have to pay a one-time price to unlock it or maybe it unlocks after a certain amount of days. There's all kinds of things you could do with this. But the cool thing about school is that, again, you can gate this however you want, gate the content however you want. Uh, it's I think still $97 a month, but it doesn't have its own video hosting. So you would have to put your videos on YouTube or Vimeo or Wistia or wherever, or if you're doing them on Loom and they're already there on Loom, you can share the link from Loom. But when you're going to do it, as a matter of fact, I think I can show you right here. You have to, um, if you're going to put a video on there, add YouTube, Vimeo, Loom, or Wistia video link, and then it will embed them. And it'll look just like this. So if you already have those videos and you want to put them somewhere, maybe, like I said, you put them on YouTube and you have them listed, uh, unlisted or whatever, then you can put them here on school. What school is doing is giving you a nice interface to arrange them, which would be not much better than if you just had them on YouTube and you pointed people to it. Okay. So quick recap. If you're doing Facebook Lives, you want to make sure that one you go through the process of saving all of your videos that have been on that platform. Facebook is rolling out over time, the ability to do that in a bulk format, whether you're gonna download it locally to your computer or you're gonna download it or transfer it to Google Drive, Dropbox, maybe they'll add another interface, I don't know, but those are the two that they have listed so far. That's the first step. Second step, if you're gonna do Facebook Lives from here on out, do them from a platform that allows you to back stuff up locally. Ecamm Live, StreamYard, Restream, Lots of them will do it, okay? And then number three, uh, how are you going to take that stuff that you've downloaded and organize it in a way that makes sense? Some good options, uh, especially if you're running a business, Kajabi, membership.io, or school. Those are all great ways to put your stuff out there. So hope this served you. If you have any, any questions or comments, no matter where you happen to be watching this, let me know and I'll answer them when I can. I'm sure this is going to be an evolving thing. I'm sure we're going to get some new information. Maybe some things will change. As that does, I'll make sure that I update this wherever you happen to be catching this right now. Okay. Hope you have an amazing day and I'll catch y'all soon. Later.